Hi, I'm Edwin Samuelson. Welcome to The Cinephiles, the show that allows you to eavesdrop on the conversation of fellow film fanatics. Today I'm sitting here with my two partners in crime, Jeff Galishaw and Eric Cohen. So, Mr. Galishaw, explain to us what this show is about. This is about, the, I, I guess, the latest trend. It seems that a lot of, I guess, up-and-coming filmmakers and also studio films are going uh, to make movies that harken back to an era because they know like a lot of film fans really like Grindhouse movies. So it's more like their attempt to try and sell a Grindhouse movie, but with all this nice technology and budgets, even though most of the films we'll be talking about here are more of the mid-size to low budget range. And some of them even try to copy the look and feel of exactly. the But these films are more rather simple to... Uh, explain the plots and stories of rather than oh this happens and this happens and this happens but one thing all of these films have is that they're always surprising in some way and they try to give the audience what they think they want which is usually violence nudity you know some misplaced comedy well, one thing that's uh, you know grindhouse the term was not really popularized of course by tarantino with his big flop grindhouse when i was a kid he just called them flop houses or just exploitation you know drive-in movies but that flop what, houses well you know you see you like, mean whore houses no a flop that. house like flop. you know it's, a, it's just an old <laughs> shitty <laughs> no an old shitty place on in, in a, a theater should be just condemned but they would show movies there and just run them you know they'd be show a lot of porno and other disgusting stuff but the thing is, Tarantino's is Grindhouse. Well, gr Tarantino's <laughs> Grindhouse was a huge flop, but it did popularize the term Grindhouse with the average public, and it did lead to resurgence in these type of films. I mean, these new ones that are coming out, these retro type films or neo films, and it also should be added on like something like like festivals like Fantastic Fest and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, that. basically, uh, uh, what a, what a perfect example of a Grindhouse movie, in my opinion, is a title. When I tell it to you, you know exactly what it's about. You know, Hobo with a Shotgun is one that got a huge amount of hype online. I mean, well, it, it started off at uh, actually, uh, and we at talked about Grindhouse. We talked yeah. about yeah, we talked about Grindhouse, and, and here's the connection. Trailer. Yeah. yeah, it was a trailer contest that they put out where you were supposed to send in your amateur ones, and the best one would be featured. And this uh, Hobo with a Shotgun won over all these films with a unanimous, uh, I guess, a reaction. So. And the response was good, and, and only. And then, by the way, this trailer only played in the Canadian version of the film. It did not play in the American. So that's yeah. why, if you didn't see it, that's why. Yeah, you could see it online, of course. Yes. And then, I guess the filmmakers, uh, people were so impressed that somebody actually was willing to give them a budget to make this into a full feature. And of course, he didn't. They didn't bring back the guy who who starred in the trailer. But they stroke on some luck when they got Colt's great actor. Rucker Hauer to star in this film. Rucker Hauer, man, I said that. I, I, I was like, you know what? This could actually be pretty good. I love Rucker Hauer. I mean, isn't it great to see him in exploitation? And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, I was shocked. I, was, I thought you were going to give your little review of the oh. film first. Oh, he just did. I think. Uh, okay. Oh. I, I would take. Well, obviously, oh. Edwin is not a fan of this movie. Oh, oh. oh God. Guys, I'm not either, to be honest. Guys. Oh my. Let me, ask, God. let me just tell you something. I seem to be the only person who actually it is, liked it, it this is, film. It is akin to getting ass fucked for an hour and a half. Or uh, it, oh, come it on. Is, it's not that bad. It, 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 it is. It is un watchable garbage. I, I, I and what upsets that. oh I think it's absolute mm. shit. I feel like it wants to be a grindhouse ripoff, but really it's trying to be a trauma film. Bravo. Which is a different thing. That's my problem too. One and I'm not a fan of trauma. No. Okay. The only trauma film I've ever liked might have been the first Toxic Avenger and that's it. <laughs> um, but and also it's so in love with its own conceit to the point where it's like, oh Get off, you know, come off it already. It's just, it, it you know, it's like if it, it should have stayed, it worked as a trailer, mm -hmm. as a one joke thing, yeah. but extended into a feature length film. After a while, you're just like, and I know what we're trying to do. It wants to pile on the weird, you know, on okay. top of the weird yes. and all that stuff. But it just, it just like, it, it, you just feel like the guys behind a camera, are like, oh, aren't I so funny and being so ironic and you. You know, all this stuff. Exactly. And it just, I just found it annoying. This was the worst film I saw that year. Honestly, what? I hated uh, okay. this film. Let me tell you what I hated about okay, it. Okay, go I mean, ahead. I, tell you, I have to go. mention. One of the things is that <laughs> these people set out to make a grindhouse movie, as Eric said. Okay. They did. They made a trauma film. And it takes place in Canada, and they're trying to pass it off as this American setting. I don't know what's generic city. Generic city, whatever. And Rucker Howard 
is such a good actor, and I felt so. I felt like he was like in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a, one of those porno loops that he's embarrassing himself. It was just really hard to watch him, and it just it takes. It just the problem is it's it, it doesn't take itself seriously enough. It's in on the joke too much. It's trying to wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Look at this. We're making a grindhouse film. I will admit it does feel like a trauma film, and that's not grindhouse. But I will say that while I was watching it, I was entertained. I I guess maybe since I'm a fan of Kevin Smith films, I don't mind if the filmmaker thinks he's smarter than the audience and is piling on the stuff. I was still entertained. So I don't know. I don't have a problem. I don't even have a problem if it feels more like a trauma film than a grindhouse. Whatever that means. I mean, you can make an argument. Okay. I've got a lot of traumas earlier. I'll put could be grindhouse films. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that if, if that's your, I, I didn't think he succeeded in no. what he was attempting okay. to do. I can understand if you. And, I, I, I think if, if, if I, he wasn't talented enough feels, to make it as funny as he wanted to be. Yeah. If you watch, like every time we do Fantastic Fest, because I'm an avid follower, what happens there every year? They always like Draft House always does this thing where they have people do a competition where they send in like bumpers. Mm -hmm. You know, the competition where they'll take those bumpers and they'll screen them. And they're yes. like, it's like a different theme every year. This year was time travel. The year before that, I forgot what it was. And some of them try to outgross the next one. I feel like Hobo with a Shotgun is just a strong collection of these, like, bumpers that people would do for Fantastic Fest to try to get themselves seen. Where it's okay. like, let's see how we can outgross the whole thing. And it'll be so gross and disgusting, it'll be funny. I saw a film that a lot of people in the genre community, were, I mean, not genre community, sorry, a lot of horror fans were raving about. Mm -hmm. And I saw it because they were saying, this is great, this is awesome. Man, you're gonna talk about. I, and I rented it. And I was like, this is terrible. A movie called Hatchet. Everyone was raving about it. I was going to say the same thing. thing. Now, Hatchet. Was, and Hatchet 2 was yes, terrible. Her, her, oh, Hatchet me tell you, 2 is I watched and Hatchet, and I saw this film. And I mean, I had people tell me how great this was. I'm like, this is Friday the 13th. I Cabin yeah, <laughs> this is thir no, this is Friday the 13th. This is Friday the 13th. This is Friday the 13th, part 7. This is Friday the 13th, part to this. This is from this movie. This okay. is from this movie. And then I talked to the people who like these films. And then I realized something. And it upset me because then I came uh -huh. to a real epiphany. I'm old. These kids are young. They never saw the films that I grew up with. These are carbon copies of the films that I grew up with for a new generation. But they're done poorly. And that's how I felt about. What, what, what well, again, my issue is I, I guess I haven't. I, I don't feel old because <laughs> I don't old. like Hatchet and some other people do. I'm my old. problem with Hatchet is it's like films like Hatchet and Hobo with Shotgun is that the guys behind the camera think they're cleverer than they really are. Yeah, they do. Just hearing the title, my I already didn't uh, expect too much from it. And when I watched it, I mean, it. Well, obviously, it's going to fall into certain cliches like the hooker with the heart of gold, all that other stuff. But I just thought. It was very inventive as the film came on because I, especially the villain, the I think it's the plague is the name of the crime family. I thought all that stuff was very interesting. In fact, I could have watched the whole film just on the plague alone. So what's the next one, Jeff? I think the next one should be a film I actually watched on a double feature with Hobo with a Shotgun, which I hope you guys like a little bit better. And it goes by the name of Rubber. Now, this film, I honestly didn't expect to like it at all because I th heard the plot line where it's uh, basically a uh, rubber tire comes alive no it doesn't talk but it goes around and it starts killing people by making their heads explode again you notice this is a continuing theme here but yeah, I well, have yeah. to say I it was weird it was strange I can see why some people didn't like it but there's something about it that kept me entertained and made me marvel at in fact even one of the things that um, we have always mentioned, but that I rarely talk about, the soundtrack to this film is fucking awesome. Well, it's directed by a musician, so... Uh, yay. And after it, I bought the soundtrack, and I have to say that, I mean, considering most of the film, there isn't any dialogue, it helps set the mood for many of the scenes. Well, I, the first I heard about this film was one day I go to visit Eric out at his place, and he goes, hey, Eddie, uh, I just saw a film with my girlfriend called uh, Rubber. You should look it up. It's kind of interesting. So I go, okay. So I take it home, and I look at it, and... I was like, uh, not to, I can't get into this right now. Then I tried again, and I was like, no. My wife came in and goes, this really sucks. I don't want, turn this off. I'm like, okay, honey. So then I had to watch it again today, the third time, and I finally finished it because of Jeff. You know, this is, I want to do it for Jeff. And, well, just because a film is weird and different doesn't mean it's good. I think it's got some good stuff in it. The problem is, is that even at 80 minutes, it really does stretch its, its length out very much. It should have been a half an hour, to, not even a half an hour, maybe a 15, 20 minutes short. I did like seeing some of my favorite, you know, 
Wayne's Hauser. Yeah, Wayne's Hauser. Yeah. I, any anytime he's in a movie, it's, it automatically earns a, a point in my book. He's very funny, even though he doesn't have really much to do. And Steven Spinella, who's Steven a very Spinella. good, a very good New York stage actor. Uh, I think he delivers his monologues very well in a very weird, like. It's it's like a fever dream. This movie. Oh, it's David Lynchian. Yeah, yes, very David that's Lynchian. who it reminded me of. You know, it just. But the problem is, I, I feel love the your movie. comment, though. By the way, he delivers his monologues very well. He <laughs> does. I mean, he does because you know it because the well, thing he's is, Steven Spinella, by the way, was in the original Broadway cast of Angels of America, and he was also in Virtuosity. And he was also in the remake of Day of the Jackal. And he was also called the I, Jackal. And another one I like. No, another one I like. I, the first one, my first one. Here we are. We're competing. Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Chir- no, Anyways, no. Uh, he would was you like to know what Ravenous. my thoughts on Rubber was? I'm afraid to. <laughs> you ready? Yes. I fucking loved it. Thank I, you. I, I, I love ally. Rubber. Why do you think he just recommended it to R- me? Rubber, 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 I just think is. I was expecting to hate it too when I heard it about it because I was thinking, oh, this is going to be pretentious, postmodern it nonsense. Is. I disagree. <laughs> I think it's very clever. I think it's uh, very funny. I was surprised at how amused I was by the Stephen Spinella sheriff character and then the whole twist of like what he actually turns out to be. You know, the whole focus group stuff I thought was brilliant. It was a brilliant commentary, <laughs> postmodern commentary on the kind of people and their thoughts on watching the kind of films we're discussing in this episode. Visually, it's very impressive. I mean, but I mean, it is. It's very okay, beautifully shot. God. And, and I like love, and, and like the whole stuff it. with the tire, I mean, he's also making fun of like, you know, this this is why you were like I'm not sure this fits in the ground. I go yeah it does. It's, it's this is making fun of like the hearse. It's making fun of the car. It's making fun of you know dual to a certain extent inanimate objects becoming you know, t- you know creatures of threat. You know what I mean? And it's a fucking rubber tire. I'm going to actually bring up one Eddie suggested and bring up. Well, actually, Eric suggested it, but I agree okay. with him. Uh, drive angry. Mm. I will say this on record. This was the film. That that Grindhouse should have been. I love this film. I went in there with no expectations because you know Nicolas Cage has made a very so pleasant much surprise. Nicolas Cage very has made so too. much crap. I I just like avoid most of his stuff like the plague. But yeah, it but. is a <laughs> fun movie, and I love the performances and all this. Uh, Nicolas Cage, you know, doing his cool. In high a lot guy. of ways, it's a film Ghost Rider should have been. Too. Yes, this yeah, is this. Yes. It, it is Ghost Rider. It basically has the same premise. But, but much and I have to. I have to. Before I forget the my one of the funniest performances I've seen in a quite a while was in this film, and it's by William Fincher in this film. Yes. William Fincher mm-hmm. is fantastic. fantastic. In this. He steals, he steals every single the movie. Scene. He's really good. Nicholas Cage dies, goes to hell, and he breaks out of hell to rescue his daughter. Uh, his grand- grand- he rescued mm-hmm. his daughter's child, who is his granddaughter, granddaughter. And from, it, from a satanic sacrifice. From a satanic sacrifice, and the 3D is great, and the car chases are great, and there's a wonderful hysterical scene. Standalone scene well, it's, in it's the a, motel. It's, it's brilliantly. <laughs> it's so. Funny. However, though, I have to it say, has, it was copied from another film. They ripped it off from uh, Shoot 'Em Up. But it's really good in this one. But it's it's still well done. Yes, yeah. it's really well done. I enjoyed it. It's finally, a film we can all agree on. It's just because it's you know what I love about it. I love that I love that. And this is what Hobo with a Shotgun should have been. And I'm not saying. Let me tell you why. It didn't take itself too seriously. It didn't think it was funnier than it actually was. And the performances were all on the mark because they knew what type of film they were in. And that's why it works so well. All right. So okay. that moves. Then we move on to what? So what do we have? Vacancy. Left? I would go with vacancy, vacancy. next. We talk about vacancy, which I'm not sure falls in Grindhouse, I but I'm, well, I'm willing so to debate it on okay. that. Now, yes, I would like to hear why you don't think it falls I don't know. I just, I guess because I have a, and, and trust me, I'm not the expert on Grindhouse as someone like Eddie is, but, okay. but I, in my mind of Grindhouse, I think of something, you know, like either Texas Chainsaw Massacre or a Race with the Devil, maybe, but but something, or like, you know, exploitation stuff, but like this, action stuff in the 70s. But this film really does feel like, like a well, when I saw Vacancy, it reminded me, for me, well, I don't see that. What I see in Vacancy is more like the films that you would see made for TV that were really good in the 70s. Like, we we're talking about the Danny Coleman film. Dying of course. Moonlight. Okay. Good There's the stuff that you see that were actually, like, they gave you kind of nightmares after watching it, because it, but they were on TV. And I found this to be more in that league. I can almost see your point, but the problem is this film... If it was not as violent, as sadistic it was, it was, it mm-hmm. could basically be a thriller of the week, you know, if it didn't have the violence in it. But since the, it has so much violence, the what we call the exploitative violence, the one that's amped up for an exploitation mm-hmm. grindhouse. I didn't think the violence was, it. was that bad. Oh, I think it's film. pretty sadistic. Um, I think it's it sadistic. I, I, I think just the stuff you see on video is bad, but other than that. No, but the whole premise, the most of the thing is like, 
in a, like an example, one dying room only is a film. The people would just disappear, but you'd never really find out why. It'd be more like a thriller thing. This one, you know what's happening to these people, that they're being, you know, tortured and destroyed and disemboweled. You know, it's not really so much suggested. You, you know what's happening. Now, I mean, one thing that I, I mean, we, you can guys can go back to the, the, the show where we actually reviewed the film, Grindhouse, the Tarantino film. I mentioned, because this came out at the same time as Grindhouse, this to me, this one and, and I believe Drive Angry are the two oh, films okay. that really felt more like Grindhouse movies to me than anything else. Because, as I mentioned, it had the violence, it also had the people taking the familiar story, the people that are tourists, you know, on the road, and mm -hmm. then they, they stop some roadside attraction, and of course, they wish they never made that stop. Texas Chainsaw Massacre takes this 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 very well. I would say there's more hell. in certain ways of, because, I, yeah, I don't know, I... I don't know if I told because because those were horror movies. This is not a horror. Film. Oh, I think it's a horror film. No, I, I see it more of a thriller. Oh no, I, I think it's more of a horror film because it's more exploitative. The thriller more. It's uh, more exploitative. No. It's more yeah. exploitative. If it wasn't exploited, I told exploitive. I could tell. I could. And the only it. way that it's exploitive is in the video. They're wa the videos they're watching. Beyond that, what actually happens to the couple? Only one thing happens that's really violent to the couple. But and I'm that's saying the it. premise though is in that fact, more violence is right? done to the to the hunters than it is being done in the hunted, I think. I think you were talking about how vacancy, you don't think it's a grindhouse film. Well, I think it's a, it's a grindhouse film because... Well, I don't know, because I'm not, I'm not as well, well versed in that area of, of, of film pro well, product as, as you I, As I am a exploitive <laughs> uh, commentator now, because 42nd Street Forever, Volume 3 and 4 in Blu-ray edition, buy at your local store. They... Um, the film, think about the plot. Why are the people being abducted? It's not like just like, you know, to, to kidnap them or to steal money. It's to, to really like make them be in like these snuff films. That's a pretty sick, you know, thing, you know? And it's not so much suggested. I mean, you see the footage on the video screen where you know that's gonna happen to them. It's not like, a, a, a perfect example, we were talking about Dying Room Only. That was a TV film we were talking mm -hmm. about. This one, the person is kidnapped and you don't really know why they're being kidnapped and it comes out, it unravels more yeah, of a but, mystery. But, but something like Vacancy is more reminiscent of recent films that come out, like Hitcher, or, you know, it's Torture more Force. reminiscent of, of, yeah, sort of, but you know what, it doesn't really go into hostile territory. I mean, like I said, the only violence that I recall in Vacancy is the stuff they see on the videotapes mm -hmm. and, and the violence they inflict on their pursuers. And that's it. I mean, it's, it, it is a surprise. It's actually, if you think about it, it's a pretty bloodless movie. I know, but it's suggested, so it's, it's a lot more. You know, it's like, you know. Um, but um, what I, what, what, well, the get titles it, we've been but talking to get about. It, to get into why I, I like this film, I think the concept is good. I think it's, it's, it's kind of well-directed. It's not perfect. I mean, I can see, you can see the movie immediately and see there's post-production interference from the studio. And I do love, what's his name? I'm so sorry. Luke Frank, Wilson. no, Frank Wiley. Wow, oh. Who is a lot of fun to watch. Is this very One sleazy. One of my favorite characters. Yeah, actors. and this is a, a really <laughs> weird role for him, because I've never seen him do a role like this. He's doing the Norman Bates type character. Uh, he grew a mustache, <laughs> but he's very weaselly and sleazy, and I like that. He does it. He he's, he knows what type of film he's in. He's having fun with. My problem again is the post production interference at the end. It obviously tested. They tested the film. It the ending tested poorly. It's obvious it was reshot. You know where a character survives something that they should never have been able to survive. In fact, I believe that's like, what, I, what they said happened. You know, like the uh, uh, Are you sure that's a story? Because that didn't feel, feel like that to me. Oh, that ending where they go through the hotel and you know just what Luke Spoilers. Wilson. Spoilers. Is, is, mm. is it Luke, uh, Luke, Luke Wilson? Wilson. Yeah, just comes mm. right out like. But you know, but I mean, but right. do, do you know what the original ending was supposed to? Be? I believe he dies. I mean, can you look at it. It's just ridiculous. Well, I, I didn't I didn't see it as studio interference. I just thought it's just a script that they didn't know how to end it. Yeah, that's it. The just kind of just like peters out till the ending. It's it's a it's a pretty um, fun exploitation. Oh, I, I think vacancy. I mean, I haven't. I mean, I, I I thought vacancy was okay. It didn't blow me away or anything well, no, like that. I, I think it's very well shot. I think there's some <laughs> some interesting moments in that that are truly suspenseful. I think it's one of Luke Wilson's better performances. Yeah, because he's really he's playing a, a, a different <laughs> character than what he usually plays. And I like he plays the and, and not entirely sympathetic character. Either. No, and I like that Kate Beckinsale's the type. Of um, I like Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, my the problem, problem with her characters, I know they mm -hmm. set her up to be like a person who's prone to. Uh, you know, hysteria. But I thought it was a little overdone. I, I found myself annoyed. It's like, okay, you want to save your life, stop fucking crying. Well, yeah, I, I thought that was overdone. There's a lot of stuff like that. I do like that she is tougher than, than Wilson in a few scenes. And she yeah, there's, 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 there's stuff but where she's she is smarter. Annoyed, but, but she's but, not a good actress. But I'm going to disagree with you on yeah, Frank Wally. Back and say, oh. Really? <laughs> I, I understand why you like the performance. I get that. But I thought he was so over the top that it was like, okay, this guy isn't Norman Bates. This is just a guy who's trying to, he's doing a, he's, he's leading a criminal, group of criminals, they're just doing this criminal activity, 
you know, the whole golly gee whiz thing was a little, well, to me, it just seemed in a pr misplaced in the context of that. You know, it'd be another thing, if he, if it, it would be another thing if it was just him and a family of sadistic I, I, I'm people that I'm just did it for the sake I'm of gonna, being sadistic. I'm going to concede to you because, you know, I like him a lot in the movie. He's a lot of fun to watch. But there is one thing I have to agree with you on that. If you saw him as the hotel clerk, would you ever rent a room from him? Probably not. Exactly. <laughs> so I do agree with you on it that. It is a but motel, but maybe if I just want to get a room... I'm just going to go. You know, I still enjoyed it, I'm though. not going to think, oh, and, 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 and there's like nothing conspiracy. really... It, it does... It's, it's a bit paint by numbers. It's like everything that happens you've seen before. Like the cop shows up to investigate the thing. You're like, oh, good, the cop's here, but we can't well, call I'll him. Admit, and you know it's original. Gonna, film, and you know what's going to happen to the cop. The you know, and all yeah. that stuff. You know that, that. Or like... And then, you know, there's a scene that annoyed me. is when they're banging on the window trying to get the truck driver's attention. It's like... You just said, let's not bang on the window and get the truck driver's attention because he might be one of them. So why are you banging on the window to get the truck driver's attention? You know? It's not perfect. I, well, you know, I stuff had like fun that, with the film. It's a fun I mean, date movie. It's a fun I date. Love, I, I, though I have to say this, and this is not a dig on a film, I did like the title sequence a lot. The title sequence was a great title sequence. Very Saul Bass. Piranha 3. 3D, huh? 3D. Yeah. Prime well, free. Um, <laughs> well, whatever. Yeah, it's 3D. Well, technically, you are correct because there is two other Piranha films, and this is the third one. Exactly. We should have actually, if you, we should have followed that up after uh, Drive Angry because it's the same director, isn't it? No. No, no, no it's not no, the same director. No, no, take that no, back. No, no. Sorry. Uh, you can put it. Eric it is, is wrong for a change. Well, this film, I love. Joe Dante. I think he, and I know Jeff and Andre, uh, Joseph are good pal, and sometimes, you know, guests on the show, love Joe Dante, and we love Piranha. Piranha is a terrific B-movie. Now, that is a grindhouse drive-in movie if I've ever seen Don't one. like 2 too much. <laughs> 2, well, even though it was directed probably by the... the spawning? By, 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 well, it was, as Jim Cameron will say, it's the best movie about flying fish ever made, and, and I can give him that. That's it. Um... And as Leonard Moulton said, you have to be psychic to see this man would direct a Terminator. But anyway, uh, Piranha was one of Roger Corman's biggest hits in the 70s, and it was, you know, in development for a while to remake it because they remade Def Race as, you know, Def Race. Terrible, terrible, terrible remake. I agree. Oh, yes. Terrible remake. Mm. Uh, but it did bring attention to the original, as I tell people. I am 100% for remakes these days. I used to be against it because I was a film purist, but then... I thought of what the, the benefits of a remake w were, and they outweigh the, the bad things. One is, it brings attention to the original property, and it also brings the original on a nice special edition Blu-ray or DVD, okay. which makes I'll me very happy. That's the only good thing. And thankfully, we got, a nice re we got a nice Blu-ray of Piranha, the original, and Blu-ray. I am happy as a clam. Okay. This film I had hopes for because I, I don't know about Eric, I am a big fan of the director of this film because he did two films that I really like, well, a film I really like called High Tension, and he also did the Hills Have Eyes remake. He I unfortunately think did Mirrors, too. <laughs> mirrors, I will, f I do agree, it's, a, it's not that very good. It's not that good. But this one, I thought, you know what, he's doing a movie about Piranha, it's a Joe Dante movie, you know, he'll do it as humor and all this. Well, I saw the movie in 3D in the theater. Uh, it was shot in 2D and post-converted, but unlike a lot of these other post-converts, they actually had the intention of always converting it to 3D, so it's okay. better than the average 2D up-converts. Mm -hmm. This one is not a good movie. It's, 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 it's um, everything about cinema I don't like. It's, it's, it's <laughs> basically if Eli Roth made it. It's, in fact, he's even in it being the annoying he bastard that he always is. It's, it's always got to be follow these stupid people around, the party culture, the people who just, you know, are like Animal House rejects, you know, just all drinking and stupid I people. agree with you. And uh, You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's easy to sit through. It's not a boring film, but it's... I can say that. I would, no, this is my description of the film. It's harmless, but it's just I would nothing say special about it. I it's a retarded movie. It is stupid. I'd be using a very politically incorrect statement. It's a retarded movie in the sense that... I guess another one of these films that thinks it's being really postmodern and funny, but it's really not. Well, a perfect example. I'll give it's, you a just perfect an, example. it's just another example of the kind of film that thinks <laughs> I, it's making I, I gotta give fun of. I gotta give you Sorry, dude. I give you an example. Go ahead. Do you, remember, do you remember that South Park episode where they had uh, Cartman be the robot who came up with these great movie pitches? Like, mm -hmm. you know, awesome old robot, Adam Sandler does this and whatever. Okay. I can imagine these people going, okay, we're going to do the Piranha remake. What can we have the Piranha do? How about this? Let's have it where it bites this guy's dick off, and then it eats his dick, and then spits it out. 
I mean, it's just, it's obvious that these people just decided to do stupid shit because they thought that people would like it. You know, of course, you have the spring break party where you have the one thing that's kind of funny, but it's not as funny as it could be. You have Jerry O'Connell playing Joe Francis, the douchebag. Yeah, he was annoying. It's annoying. It's just it like, it's, really it's not, I mean, it's, 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 it's better if it was a little bit more subtle, but it's just too obvious that he's playing that character. Okay, and it just shows you how, how the original ahead, Piranha was so much better. Piranha, the original so is a much classic. Okay, Go I ahead. will admit, Piranha has done so much better, but I... At least John Sale script. Okay, okay, yes, I, lo I know. That's why. But here's what I have to say when it comes to this film. I felt that was the whole intention of the film was just to make a fun horror comedy because obviously the cast is in on it. Nobody's taking it seriously. And I just found it very entertaining. It's over the top, but I think that's what it set out to be. That's even its advertising. They did not make it seem like oh, any of this was I don't important. disagree. With, uh, again, this is why, like I said, whole, I know what they're trying to do. I just don't think they succeeded at okay. it. Okay. Well, I It's like, you know what? You know what it reminds me of? What? Hatchet. Especially Hatchet. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, come Absolutely. on. Where it, it wants to be a parody of what it's doing, oh. but it's it's they're just not funny. The guys who did this film are talented. An, they're and, not comedic directors. It's annoying, and it's like and it mis they're not and it, mistake, it, it mistakes obnoxious for being subversively funny, yes, and it's just not. Is it funny? Do you think the film was funny? At least? I wasn't sitting there laughing my ass off. So then it doesn't it. succeed. As but a it's comedy. not a funny. No, comedy. no, it doesn't. It doesn't succeed as a comedy. But I did laugh a few times. And and I, I'm sorry, I enjoyed this. I'm not going to sit there and say it was the best film I saw all year, but I enjoyed it for what it was. I didn't take it as seriously. I went out to watch something that I thought would be fun, and I had fun watching it. And that is, for me, I did, for this film, that was all it took. I'll make clear. I, I'm I not looking at it like I did, I didn't hate it. the master, I, for instance. I didn't hate it. I just didn't think it was anything special. I don't think it set out to do what it wanted to do. And I will admit, it's I, nothing special, but it was entertaining. It's There's too many dumb characters. I will say there is a there are a couple of good ideas. I like the origin of the piranha instead of them being some kind of genetically engineered thing. I like how there was like an earthquake and they came out of some prehistoric area. I thought that was kind of fun. I like seeing Christopher Lloyd playing his crazy professor, goof, you know, Dr. Brown. But it's... I, I already, you know, and and Richard Richard Dreyfuss Dreyfuss he just reminded me he was in the film. Yeah, exactly. Well, what, oh, wait, wait, Richard Dreyfuss. Dreyfuss. Yeah, that, 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 was, that, was, that, was, that was just too overdone. It's like, you know, it's like he's playing his, obviously, too obvious he's playing his role from Jaws. It's like, it's like, ooh, let's make this so obvious it's him. You know, you know what I'm talking about? It just was too you much. You know, but if it was trauma. a better written movie, they could have pulled, they pulled, pulled it off. off. I mean, a lot of it, you know, it's just. It, John Sayle. You know it, felt, it felt like a lazy cash in. That's what it felt yeah. like to but me. There were like a lot of jumpy moments. They want to they want to rush out a 3D film because, you know, 3D was starting to become really popular now. And they decided, let's take this property, Piranha, let's remake Piranha because it has a cult following. And let's get this director's associated with Hot Tension and, you know, other films. And just and just like let's do this, but let's do this quickly because we gotta get it out there, you know. And, and you just feel like it's it feels like the, the not the care hadn't gone into it. The whole, you know, there's some stuff that's like kind of mordantly funny, you know, like like the scene where like like all hell's breaking loose in the big spring break party thing, and then the cables like like slash like that girl like in half, you mm -hmm. know, stuff like that's kind of like okay, that's kind of cool and funny. But then you and, have the scene like the nude ballet way. and with that music. It's well, just, that was the exploitive. Well, part it was of the movie, yeah, but, that, but, but mm. it, 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 like they could have had more fun with the fact that okay, we're going to do all these exploitive elements. I didn't. They didn't. It was like their idea of being funny and subversive was like let's make let's up. The, the volume on how obnoxious and caricatured we can make these characters be, that doesn't make it funny. It just makes it annoying. I couldn't agree more. That's what you annoyed know? the shit out of me. I would me. say the only thing I did like about the film, I, I like seeing Elizabeth Shue play that character. I thought it was an and interesting choice too. to have the, 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 the sheriff character is going to save the day, the Brody character, be a woman. It was an interesting show. I, I think of all the films we discussed today, Drive Angry would be my favorite. These guys, I think, have their favorites. I feel bruised. What's your favorite? <laughs> Any favorites? My favorite, I would have to say rubber. Yeah, I'd say toss up between rubber and drive angry. Drive angry. Well, anyway, I'm Edwin Samuelson. That brings our Grindhouse show to a close. Hopefully, we'll have Grindhouse part two. I love the Grindhouse. It's been, you know, being reopened by people. I hope it continues to be that, that popular for people. Sorry, that's bad. I hope that Grindhouse films continue to be made for years to come. I love exploitation, and I hope you uh, check them out. I'm Edwin Samuelson. This was the Cinephiles.